Hello viewers, thank you very much for watching Gifts TV. Please, if you have not subscribed, kindly do so in order to help grow the channel. Today's lesson, we'll be looking at variable discussion. And specifically, we'll be looking at independent variable, dependent variable, and control variables. Now, let's look at what a variable is in general. Then we also look at what a research variable is defined in the literature. What is a variable? One will ask, what is a variable? In general, a variable is any quantity that you are able to measure in some way. And this could be a temperature or height or age. Basically, a variable is anything that contributes to the outcome or results of the experiment or the, study, the research study that you are embarking on. Now, it brings out to study variables. Now that we know what a variable is in general, a research variable is also known as the study variable. And it's an informal term that means any variable used in research that has some kind of cause and effect relationship. And in the, for the case of a research or study variable, it always have three forms. And those are the independent variables, dependent variables and control variables. We'll be looking at these three forms in a deeper fashion. But now let's look at several information about research variables. About study variables. Let's say you are in a lab, okay? Let's say you are in this lab and your instructor asks you to design an experiment and assuming that the experiment must test how plants grow in response to different colored light. How will you begin? The bigger question is how will you begin? What are you going to change? What are you keeping the same? And what are you measuring? This, these questions helps you to have a, bit, a broader picture about the various forms of variables, being independent, independent, and control variables. So these parameters of what you will change and what you will keep the same are called variables. So let's kindly take a look at how all of these parameters in the experiment are defined. And as I stated earlier, they are defined as independent, dependent, and control variables. Let's look more into dependent variables. Sometimes in some literature, dependent variables are also called a criterion variable. It is a variable that a researcher intends to explain. So a dependent variable is the measurement that changes in response to what you change in the experiment. And this variable is dependent on other variables. Hence the name is dependent variable. Okay, because you want to explain that variable and you are going to use other variable to explain it. The occurrence of the dependent variables depends on the explanatory variables or the independent variable. And we'll be talking about those independent variables in a few minutes. For example, in the plant growth experiment that we propose in this particular lab, the dependent variable will be plant growth. Will be plant growth, okay? So you could measure this by measuring how much the plant grows every two days, okay? You could also measure it by measuring the rate of photosynthesis. In either way, all of these measurements are dependent upon the kind of light you give to the plant. So this is particular example is for the, the science laboratory experiment. Let's also consider an example in the social science arena. And let's assume that we are working on this particular project title. Caption, an examination of the impact of education on economic growth in Ghana. Column, policy implications. So in this particular example, the dependent variable here is economic growth because you intend to explain economic growth, okay? So how do you intend to explain economic growth? You intend to utilize education to explain economic growth in Ghana. So in this particular case, the economic growth, okay? The economic growth here is the dependent variable. Let's look at the independent variable. 
The independent variable is also known as the explanatory variable. Sometimes researchers also say that it's also called the regressors. If it is seen in a model, a regression model, we can describe it as regressors, or we can also describe it as explanatory variables. So another name for independent variables are regressors, regress, regressors, okay? And explanatory variable, because you are using to explain the dependent variable. So and in general, an independent variable is the variable the experimental controls, the variable that you control, the variable that you intend to change, okay? So that something will happen to the dependent variable. It's serve as the treatment that you are what operationalizing on the dependent variable. Basically, it is the component you choose to change in an experiment. So this variable is not dependent on any other variable. That is why the name independent, it doesn't depend on anything, all right? It's rather the dependent variable that depends, that relies on the, uh, the independent variable to become what it becomes. For example, in that science experiment that we saw in the, in the laboratory regarding plant growth. So for example, in the plant growth experiment, the independent variable is the light color, the light color. Okay, so the light color is not affected by anything. Note that. But you choose different light colors like green, red, yellow, or any other color. All right? You are not measuring the light. What you are measuring is the plant growth. Let's also uh, reconsider the previous example in the social science titled An Examination of the impact of education and economic growth in Ghana, policy implication. In this particular example, the independent variable is education, okay? Because you are using education to explain economic growth in Ghana. So the independent variable here is education. All right, let's also go quickly to the control variables. A control variable in science is any other parameters affecting your experiment that you try to keep the same across all conditions. For example, one control variable in the plant growth experiment could be temperature. This implies that you will not want to have one plant growing in green light with a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius while another plant grows in red light with a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. No, this is because you want to measure only the effect of light not the temperature, okay? For this reason, you want to keep the temperature constant at the same across all of your plant experiment. In other words, you want to control the temperature because your focus is not on temperature, but it's on light. So you control for the temperature and you try to what, make some changes to that of the uh, the, the light in order to what? Reflect the outcome that you want to achieve. Another example is the amount of water you give the plant. You're not measuring water, you're measuring light. So if one plant receives twice the amount of water as another plant, there will be no way for you to know that the reason those plants grew, grew the way they did is due only to light color that they received. Okay, so you have to also make sure you control for all water consumption. So that at least you know that what is changing is what? The light. So if there is any changes in the dependent variable as the plant group, then it, we will attribute it to what? The light, not the water and not the temp temperature. All right, in the case of the social science or maybe a policy study, it is believed that there are other fundamental variables that by default may be influencing the dependent variable other than the independent variables. And those variables are called the control variables. Take for example, the, the, the topic that we utilized earlier for the case of social science, that's an examination of the impact of educational economic growth in Ghana, colon policy implication. In this particular example or title, you observe that we are utilizing education to explain economic growth. However, we have by default, the fundamental element or called micro indicator that we use to explain 
economic growth, like inflation, population growth, exchange rate, GDP per capita, labor force, several other indicators that we can use to explain economic growth. But our focus is not on those indicators. But we have to control for all those factors. Then we focus on what? Education. Because our, our, our study is about how education impacts economic growth, not inflation, and not population growth. So we have to make sure that we control all those variables and allow education to vary so that we will see the impact of education on economic growth. Let's put it on an, in an equation format for you to understand. Expressing it in a model form. In this case, the dependent variable, which is y, okay, is expressed as a function of independent variables and the control variables. That is, if you consider the previous example that we just talked about, okay, in social science titled, an examination of the impact of education on economic growth in Ghana policy implication, then the general model will be given below as what? Economic growth equal to, or economic growth is a function of education, population growth, inflation, and several other factors. And if you look at the variable highlighted in blue here, Okay, it is mapped to that of what the dependent variable, then the education is mapped to the independent variable. And if you look at population growth and inflation rate, it is highlighted in red, are uh, all mapping up to what? Control variables. So the control variables in this general model are population growth and inflation. And the independent variable is education. It's the, it's the variable we are using to explain economic growth. Though the other other factors that are that could be used to explain economic growth, but our focus is not on those factors, but it is on what? Education. And the dependent variable is economic growth. In conclusion, when graphing the results of your experiment or your regression output, it is important to remember which variable goes on which axis. Okay, because normally the independent variable are the x-axis and the dependent variables always goes on the y-axis. So in this case, the independent variable is graphed on the x-axis, while the dependent variable, which changes in response to the independent variable, is graphed on the y-axis. Note that control variables are usually not graphed because they should, they should not change. And they could, however, be graphed as a verification that other conditions are not changing. Thank you very much for subscribing to Gibbs TV. I will see you all in the next video.